والله يدعو الى دار السلام ويهدي من يشاء الى صراط مستقيم You're watching Beauties of Islam. I'm your host Yusuf Estes and for the next few minutes I want to continue talking about our relationship, our relationship with our surroundings and in particular we've been talking about our relationship with Prophet Muhammad peace be upon him. What we discovered in our previous episodes is that Prophet Muhammad peace be upon him is the best of all of the human beings sent us as an example on how to live our lives as true Muslims and also that he was sent as the mercy to mankind. Also, we learned that he is the example of the Quran itself in motion. All of these things, but at the same time, we learned that we don't eulogize him and make him to be something he's not. He even asked us not to celebrate him as the Christians had over-celebrated Jesus. And they raised Jesus, peace be upon him, to a status, in some cases calling him a son of God, in other cases calling him uh, a partner with God, in a trinity, and in some cases even saying he was God himself. And these are the kinds of statements that are totally rejected by the Muslims. Although, by the way, we believe Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, and we believe the Quran, we believe that Jesus is the Messiah, he is the Christ, he is the Logos, which is the Kone Greek, which means word. He is the word that became flesh. We know that, we have no doubt about it. But at the same time, we don't say he's God. And this is exactly what we're telling the Muslims, don't do this to Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. Because you've got some extremists out here saying things about Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. May Allah guide all of us. It's too much. Some people want to celebrate his birthday. And in fact, they're, <laughs> I don't know if they know this or not, it's never been guaranteed exactly what day is his birthday. So why do that? Why not listen to what he told you and instead of going out and inventing something that he didn't ever authorize, we could do something even better. And what could that be? Why don't we consider some of the teachings of Muhammad? Look to his hadith. I would share with you that there are some excellent books that you could read, whether you read Arabic or English. There's a lovely collection called Riyadh Salahin, means the gardens of the pious. Oh, I read this, I enjoy it so much. There's a shorter book by the same author, and this is Imam al-Nawawi. It's called Al-Arba'in, and this means the 40 Hadith. Now, when you get a chance, you read this, uh, you'll be surprised. There's only like 40 Hadith here. But you'll see things in there and you'll think, wow, look at this, it's so amazing. A beautiful teaching here, teaching me how to respond to people, how to have the relationship that I should have with others. Just like I was telling you about. Let me give you an example. Somebody asked the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, what should I do that would make Allah love me and make the people love me? Now, according to one of the hadith we find in al Arba'in, it, it is to do what? It is to uh, loosen up and do what? And it says here to just don't uh, go after the dunya. Don't seek after the material things. Give that up for Allah. And give up what the people have against you for the sake of Allah. In other words, make Allah your object in this life. And don't be coming around here and, and looking for all the material things. Don't be going to the people and giving them a hard time about everything. Relax. Lighten up. And enjoy your life as what? As a believer. And another teaching that I really was impressed with, it said he's not a believer that he fills his stomach and goes to bed at night when his stomach is full, but his neighbor's stomach is still empty. He also tells us that it's not the way of the believer that he should just keep talking and talking and talking about everything. As a matter of fact, he said what means that if you just repeat everything you hear in a date's time, in fact, you will be a liar. Just go around, listen, and repeat everything you hear, then you could be considered to be a liar. Simply because of what? Repeating everything you hear. He tells us that he's not a believer who's going around talk, 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 talk all the time because this is going to be repeating things which are not true. Somebody asked him, what about a believer? Could he be a coward, a Joban, somebody who runs away in a battle and still be a believer? He said, it could happen, yeah. He said, well, what about 
somebody who is stingy with their money, called bakhil in Arabic. He's stingy. He said he could still be a believer. They said, what about a kadib? Somebody's a liar. He said, no. No. A liar is not a believer. Well, what we're learning here from this is to see what Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, is teaching us. And living that, instead of worrying about celebrating something, put on a party hat and make a cake. <laughs> this, this, please, really. And I know there are going to be those who will be upset and they're going to say, no, I'm going to do what I found my forefathers doing anyway. And okay, all right, okay. That's, we don't have any argument with you. We just would like to encourage our youth to look to what is the value of the teachings of Muhammad. What did he really teach us to do? How to live our life as successful people in this life? And the most success that you'll ever find in this life is when you can put aside your desires, put aside your wants and your needs and your lusts for something that's more important. And listen to this teaching. You're not a believer until you prefer for yourself, for until you prefer for others what you want for yourself. So what I want for myself, I should prefer the needs of others. This gives us a chance to take a little break. And when we come back, I want to pick up with more about this special relationship that we have with the Prophet Muhammad. You're watching Beauties of Islam. Be right back after this break. Islam is keeping up the pace. Islam is for every race. خيركم من تعلم القرآن وعلمه ورتل القرآن ترتيلا Learning how to recite the Quran properly Learning the meaning of what we recite Concluding the ahkam from the verses which we recite Trying to implement what we learn in our daily life We we'll listen to the participants and the guests We'll take your phone calls We're going to recite life We'll listen to your recitation and will correct it according to the rules and regulations which will state in each episode. Now, your dream will come true. Will come true. <laughs> We're back and you're watching Beauties of Islam. And I've been talking about something a, a, a little bit tough on some of the Muslims I know when we talk about our relationship, our relationship to Muhammad, peace be upon him. All of us, we love Muhammad so much. One of our programs, we talked about that, that we always say, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, peace be upon him after his name. And that's important. We also thank Allah so much for sending our Prophet Muhammad to us. In our prayers, at the end of our prayers, when you see the Muslim at the end, you know, and he raised their finger in the end of the prayer, and what are they saying? Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa ala ali Muhammad. Kama salli ta ali Ibrahim wa ala ali Ibrahim. In Akha Hamidun Majid. And in this part of our prayer, which we're doing, you imagine this, we're doing this five times a day, every single day of our life, we're sending the prayers and the peace and the blessings upon Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, and his family and followers, as Allah had his prayers and peace and blessings on the Prophet Abraham and his family and his followers. Now, I don't know if you've thought about the ramifications behind this. This is something really big. When you're talking about these kind of blessings for all of the, the companions and all of the family of Muhammad and then those who follow him, this is something very beautiful. But at the same time, we're saying, as you blessed and put the peace and blessings upon who? Uh, the prophet Abraham and all of his family. And who are the family of Abraham? In fact, you see that Muhammad, peace be upon him, is actually asking about the blessings which were given to Abraham and to his descendants, which is Jacob or Yaqub, and all of the tribes of Israel, and uh, the Israelites, and the children of Israel. And we're asking the peace and blessings be for all, all of those who believed and did righteous deeds from the very beginning until this very moment. This is a beautiful thing to ask for in our prayers. We see from this right away that it's not the Muslims who are having a hatred or having curses for those who went before us. Not at all. In fact, these are mixed up people. 
anybody who is cursing and condemning to hell other people, this is not mentally healthy. This is not right to talk about other people like that. If you find Muslims doing it, you should warn them. This is not healthy to go around cursing people all the time. It's much healthier to realize that if there are any shortcomings, well, I guess they come for ourselves. Consider this teaching of Islam and consider this beauty. One of the big beauties of Islam is to know how did we get in this condition to start with? Why did we wind up like this? And Allah said in the Quran that He created humans in the best of form. Humans were in the best of form when Allah created them. Allah said barely He created the human beings in the best of modes. Then reduce them to the lowest of low. And how is it that they got to this condition? What was it that brought them to this? And it was their own, their own choices that they made the wrong way that put them like that. And this is what Allah tells us in the Quran, that He doesn't change the condition of the people until the people change themselves. Now, when we understand that, we begin to really get one of the beautiful pictures of Islam. And that is, if we find ourselves in good shape, really good shape with Allah, He's not going to take us out of that unless we change something about ourselves, as in Adam in the first place. But also, if we find ourselves in a bad condition, He's not going to pull us out of that until we change ourselves. And so this is so important for us to consider our relationship with Allah, our relationship with Muhammad, peace be upon him, our relationship with each other, our relationship even with our enemies and foes. Because if our relationship is right with all of these, then our relationship is right with Allah as well. Consider this teaching as well. That the Prophet Muhammad said that whoever doesn't thank the people doesn't thank Allah. And whoever can't give mercy will not be shown mercy. If I want to be forgiven, I need to do what? I need to learn how to forgive. If I want to be successful, I need to learn how to do what? I need to learn how to have this proper relationship with my Lord, with my Prophet, with the Quran, and with the true teachings of Islam. And this, my brothers and sisters, is by far the most of all of the beauties of Islam is to have this correct understanding of what Islam is really all about. I wish we had more time to tell you so many things. We have so many episodes. You can find those episodes on our website. It's called beautiesofislam.com. Beautiesofislam.com. You'll find that this website is there for you every single day. Go and enjoy these programs like this. And you'll find links to other exciting sites that we have there too. Until next time, this is Yusuf Estes asking Allah Almighty to give you the peace, the peace of the beauties of Islam. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. Islam is peace, Islam is ease.